All right, welcome everybody. Chris Petra here. Thanks so much for stopping by. We're doing Extreme Beginners series now. I hope you have your sketch pads, pencils, markers, pens. Have them strategically placed in your car, your glove box, your backpacks, briefcases, stash maybe at your relatives' houses so that if you get bored or you're not happy with the conversations going on, you can just go grab a sketchbook and find a nice easy chair and do a couple quick sketches and you get in your five minutes. Hey, even 10 minutes, you never know, it might be a lot longer than that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we have those funny conversations in the, when we're visiting our relatives and we have to take a time out and do something different to get away from it. So I have my sketchbooks here, you know, you can use these here, these are like dollar store paper. These have covers on them, magic markers, and some paintbrush. So you have these stashed all over the place and you just, you make sure you get your 10, 15 minutes in a day of sketching. Uh, These are larger ones. These are a little more pretty cool. This is one we just did recently here. We did a painting, or just we did a drawing recently on paint tube, paint brushes. So you're constantly trying to fill these up. You buy a couple extra here and there. If you don't want to bother with buying sketchbooks, you can just take printer paper, maybe take 20 sheets and staple it together in the corner. And uh, and then you can keep these in again in your um, car with a couple extra pens or pencils. You keep them in the backpack, briefcase. Again, you bring them, maybe you have some at the, your relative's house or your friends. And you take like a five minute break once in a while and just you can do some drawing. Things are quiet and nothing much is going on. And so that's good strategies to make sure you're getting in your 10 to 15 minutes a day of sketching and drawing. And you can do more, of course, but at least if you're doing that per day, you're really going to get a lot of improvement in your drawing skills. And we're always, you know, we're always saying here on my channel, drawing skills are really important. But again, I always put this in as a um, caveat that some people, I know you're out there, we have thousands of people that tune into this, um, my channel every week. And there are a few people that will say, I just don't want to draw. And that is fine if you really... I mean, even if you just try some real basics like this we're doing, you'll be better off. But again, if you really, you've made a decision, you're not going to draw, you're just going to use your paintbrush and sort of paint your paintings with a paintbrush and paint, and you're not going to get too much um, involved with <clears throat> uh, drawing, that's fine too, because there are professional artists out there that don't draw. Uh, and there's been some great ones in history too that maybe are not so much real uh, we're not so much really keen on drawing a lot. They they like to more just be very creative and maybe they did different things with their brushes and and they created more abstract style paintings. So maybe you want to paint abstract style. There's always options for people. You know, when you're an artist, you can switch your mediums. You can work in clay, do sculpture. Um, you can do tile work with tiles and um, do some cool mosaic type stuff. You can work on acrylic painting or oil painting instead of watercolor. If you find watercolor isn't really so um, fun for you or you find that maybe you want to, you can always try different mediums too at the same time. So I'm always saying have yourself some options. We're going to keep drawing here though and hopefully everyone's just going to stick with us and practice our drawing skills. So we're just going to do our, our five to ten minute drawing. Um, session here so I'm just gonna usually what I'll do is I'll def definitely make a boundary around on my printer paper here I'm gonna make my definite rectangle I'll do it by hand you can use a ruler if you want to make a rectangle with a ruler if you find your um, you want it more accurate that's fine you suit yourself I'm just doing a quick um, rectangle with my pen alright and then I'm going to also 
maybe I will use a ruler here. I'm going to draw a pretend tabletop. Actually, this is across from me a table. So I have a little small table set up across from me, and I'm pretending this is the table. So I'm going to draw a line across here. This is my table, the top of my table here. And I'm going to draw a um, container with some paintbrushes in it and a pencil. So let's start out. We're going to draw basically a, um, a rectangle here. So we're going to draw the rectangle first, like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. So that's our, our container. And then we're going to have a pencil over here. So let's see how big that pencil is. That pencil is about the same height above the top of the container, the pencil and paintbrush container, as it is the size of the container. So it's about the same height above as this much. So you could even take your pen or pencil and say, all right, this is right here where my finger is. That's the height of the container. And when I'm looking at this across from me, it looks about the same amount above, maybe a little less. So I'll slide my, keeping my finger on that point of the pen, top of the pen, and then if this is the exact same height here to this point as this height from here to the table or from the table up is this distance now from the point top of my tippy top of my finger to the top of my pen is that same distance because we remember we scaled it we went like this and said okay that's the table where my pointer finger is and this is the top of the cup now if I slide up and I don't move anything and just move my pen then that's the same distance as the height of this cup, or the size of the cup, the height. So that's that. Now I say it might be a little bit less, so I could slide down just a touch, and that might be it right there. Then I can hold my finger here, and then make a mark, and that's the top of my pencil. And then I just go down like so, and that's the eraser for my pencil. And that's my pencil here. And there's another metal I see some metal on the bottom of this pencil here. And there we go. And the light is coming from behind. So let's make a light insignia up here. So this light insignia, we don't see any light bulb in this light fixture the cone of this light fixture so that means the lights coming from a little bit behind us or pretty much directly overhead or a little behind us if we were if the light was shining in our faces well then we would see the the light bulb in the light fixture like this and then we'd be painting with backlighting where the light is facing into us but here the lights behind us a little bit in this setup I have across from me so more or less it's above me like, but a little bit in behind the cup and the uh, paintbrushes and, and uh, pencil. So that's just our light source. We want to make sure we have the right light source as we draw. This way we can put a little shading on it if we need to. Here there's not going to be much shading because the light is shining directly on the subject matter here. And we're going to do our paintbrush. And here I'm just going to draw the paintbrush. And it's a little darker here. The paintbrush has some dark painted, like a wood finish. And this is a little bit larger. And then there's the brush itself. The brush hair is like that. Okay. So there we have it. We have paint already. We have. We have a pencil, and we have a paintbrush, and let's do another paintbrush. It's in here. Let's. I'm going to take a look at this and say, okay, I already have two objects in this pencil holder and paintbrush and um, art supply holder. It's a little small cup. When I'm looking at it, I'm saying, all right, we already scaled our pencil. You recall we scaled our pencil by saying it's about the same height, a little bit less. 
So now when we're doing doing our paintbrush, when we when we drew our paintbrush in here, we didn't have to worry because we just looked at where is the paintbrush in relation to the top of this pencil. Does that make sense? Can you can you see that? So once you get that first um, item in this container uh, scaled correctly according to the height of this container, then you can just go from here and say, okay, well, how high is this paintbrush compared to the pencil? And that's all you have to worry about. And here it was just a little bit higher than the paintbrush. Maybe the brush hairs were above the top of that. So that here, once you get some things scaled in your drawing, then you're working off the rest of the items in your drawing, and it makes it much easier. So if you can see how that works, that's really going to help you when you're drawing. Does that make sense? Once you start establishing your scale of things, then you're using other items within your drawing you're going to scale your other uh, subject matter to, and you don't have to start from scratch and start saying, well, how high is this paintbrush, and then start doing this again, because you already know, you've already established that this pencil is this high above your container. That's an established height that you have that's in, in correct proportion to this uh, cup here. And that from there you can just measure or scale things accordingly. So this one is looking across from me. This paintbrush is a little higher than the tippy top of this pencil where the eraser is. Okay, I go across and say, all right, there it is. And then now I'm looking at my other paintbrush here. It's, it happens to be a, a flat brush or a square brush. And it's a little higher than this, even the, the tip of this paintbrush. Uh, about a little bit higher, maybe like that much. So now, when I start drawing my paintbrush, I could start up here if I want, or I can just leave that little bit of marking up here to know that that's where I have to land when I draw my brush. And I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to start over here and do this. Like that. And that's my brush. And then there's some metal on this brush here. Like so. Like that. A couple rivets. And that's pretty good. Okay, that's how we can actually draw and also use um, scale, judging our proportions and our scale of what we're drawing according to other things we've established. So that's a real important part of uh, contour drawing and drawing as you go. You'll always remember you can relate other items that you're drawing according to other items that you, you've established as being the correct size that, that you're actually drawing. So it all just again, for just a quick review, to start out with, we we said to ourselves, how big are we going to make this container that we have here for our pencils and brushes? We looked at our, our rectangle and we said, all right, here's our rectangle. We can't make this container this big. <clears throat> right? Because if we make this container this big, then we have no room to draw, and we're, then we're off the paper here. So when we think about the first thing we do is we look at our rectangle that we're working within, we have to say, all right, well, that container should be n not even halfway up our working space of where we have to work. So, you know, if this is the table, and then we drew another line to say this would be the thickness of the table, and then maybe there's some uh, legs under the table like so just, you know, to kind of draw the story out here a little more. So if we have a table and legs of the table, and then we have our container on top of the table, you know, you have to adjust. We have to adjust our cup on top of that table so that we can allow for the rest of the items in that container to fit within this rectangle. And that's all you have to really, really worry about is when you start to do a drawing, um, you can lightly pencil it in before you start. So that's why you, you, you always see me 95% of the time, you're always going to see what I do before I do a drawing. I'll always lightly sketch a pencil drawing and, I, and before I'm going to watercolor paint, let's say. And what I do is I kind of just check to see that I'm, I'm going to be able to fit my subject matter into a scene. Then I'll go in and I'll start drawing. And that's the reason I would lightly sketch something is because I know everything looks good. I got my 
cup the correct uh, size because it fits here and the pencil and the other paintbrush here and then the flat brush here all fits within this picture frame here. So if I started out like this and went like this I would say, oh, wait a minute, I have a lot more space up here. I can make this a little larger. And then I would go back over again lightly and say, oh, that's better. Now we're really filling up the space here with what we want, our subject matter. That's what we want. And then you can kind of see how I did that. So if I need to adjust, if I'm just doing light pencil marks, that's fine. I can do that. And then once, you know, and you, and you can always just go back in and lightly erase. If you're doing everything's really light, you can just erase and you kind of have the idea. And then you can go in and do your final pencil drawing like that and once you go over with your paint and your washes you're never going to see those uh, light sk sketches that you did to start out with if you're getting your subject matter the correct size and scale so that's just a quick uh, description of or you know a, a quick explanation of how how you, you will when you're doing your watercolor paintings you're going to do very very light sketches with your pencil pencil to get in your subject matter so that you make sure you're kind of going to be not too small or not too big within your picture frame, your rectangle. And then of course our drawing here, we just did a quick, you know, drawing to get in our 5 to 10 or 15 minutes every day. We did that, we accomplished it, and we learned a little bit about some design principles and how to scale things as well as getting started the right way. If you're going to be doing a watercolor painting, you might have to do those little very, very super light sketches on your paper. It doesn't even have to be this dark at all. It could be just barely visible, just as long as you can see it, to get your things correctly, uh, your subject matter correctly uh, situated inside your rectangle or your square. And this way, uh, you'll have a much better time when you're painting, um, because you'll already have things kind of laid out correctly, and you'll be much happier with a really good-looking painting where you have lots of subject matter in your um, your rectangle or your you're very happy because you didn't go off your paper um, with your subject matter because you made one thing too big. You made the cup too large. Let's say we let's say I made my cup too large like this. Then I start drawing and all of a sudden, oh, uh oh, I'm already off the page here. I'm out of my rectangle because I didn't start correctly, which is getting that cup, that first item you have on your table, that cup, or it could be a vase. So you might have a vase here um, with some flowers. So you'd want to make sure you kind of say, all right, let me make sure that vase is the correct height so that it fits in this rectangle after I draw my flowers and I still want to have space above it a little bit. And that looks good. So again, we'd have a problem if we drew our vase only this big. And our flowers here, then we would have all this empty space above that. We wouldn't want that, so we have to start correctly, get the first of our items correct, our um, container for our pencils and paintbrushes and art supplies, or if it's a vase with flowers, we try to make sure we just get this in here really accurately by lightly sketching in first, barely visible, and then we adjust accordingly so we get all of our subject matter in. All right, I hope this was a lot of fun for you. I hope this was really cram-filled, full of information, so you have a lot of stuff. You can maybe take a couple notes if you have to, but I'm really happy you're here. You're watching along, uh, drawing along with us here and learning some information on uh, layout and design of your drawings and your paintings eventually. Or maybe you're going to go right into this, into a painting after this. You're going to maybe try to paint this, draw and paint this scene, which is also a great idea too, since you have this drawn in. Even if it's with pen, you can do a little bit of wash on there with some watercolor wash. It's up to you. You be, you're the creator, you're the artist, have fun with this. Just keep working your 10, 15 minutes a day of drawing at minimum, and then maybe, you know, on the weekend you're doing some painting. So maybe two days uh, on the weekend, if you can, if that's a good time for you, or whenever's a good time, you try to get a couple days of painting in, you know, for maybe a half an hour each time, and then maybe you get your 10 or 15 minutes in uh, on the days that you're not painting. So mostly drawing, maybe a ratio of 60% of the time you're drawing, and uh, 40% of the time you're maybe doing some watercolor painting along with your drawing. All right, everybody, I'm going to be back in just a few. Uh, maybe we'll uh, do another drawing video on extreme beginners here. 
uh, just before you know it, we'll have another uh, video coming out. And I hope you're subscribing down below. This way, if you subscribe and you hit that subscribe button below, you know, you'll get the videos and you won't uh, uh, lose track of where we are on YouTube here. So I know sometimes YouTube, there's so many videos out there, so many artists out there online, you might get, uh, you know, uh, you might lose my uh, channel. If you So if you subscribe, then at least you know, you'll always have my channel in your subscriptions and then you'll be able to look me up in your uh, YouTube channel, your own uh, files in your YouTube channel. And then, uh, you know, this way you keep a track of what I'm doing. And if you want, you can tune in anytime you want. We'll be here every week doing our Extreme Beginner series of drawing as well as Extreme Beginner painting series. So we're doing both drawing and painting in watercolor for uh, Ultimate and uh, Extreme Beginners. Have fun with this and we'll see you on the next video, okay? Well, see you soon.